If you're anything like me, your drumming gets stuck. You feel like it's completely broken. In this video, I'm going to give you a blueprint for how to, every time you get stuck, assess that and begin to move forward. You see, we are looking for the 20% that moves the 80% forward. It's just like this sink. The other day, this sink, it was completely clogged up and wouldn't work. I thought there was this huge problem with the plumbing. You know what it was? In the little filter, in the spigot, there was a little bit of dirt. And once I cleaned that dirt out, the whole system worked fine. It's just the same way with your drumming. Watch this video, take notes, because this is the exact process that I use with myself and with my students to get unstuck, to feel like your drumming is moving somewhere, and to see the progress all the time that you're wanting to see. What is this problem? I'm dealing with this with tons of my students, whether they be online, they be in person, this idea that their drumming is broke in some way, that they have reached an impasse, they have reached a sticking point, and they can't get past it. And so whenever this happens, we as individuals, when I say we, it's me as well, and we're going to break this out. I'm going to give you some, some very tactical things that you can do, things that have gotten me unstuck, things that have gotten my students unstuck, things that whenever we host our drum camps, I spend the, the whole week with each person. I'm really looking for that one thing because many times in our drumming, there's one thing that if we can move that lever, if we can move that ball down the field, the rest of the game, the rest of the system automatically functions better. But it's finding that. And really a good teacher needs to be able to help you do that. That's really what we as teachers should be doing is, is viewing and assessing. So this problem, we reach a, a place where we are stuck. We're really stuck in our playing. It's broke. We don't feel like we can go any further. And then what happens because our identity, that's what we're looking for, right? Whenever we're looking to learn something new, there's a great book called Tiny Habits and uh, a couple of others I can give you on have Power of Habit. It talks about that identity that we want to take on. You want to take on the identity of a drummer. Well, with that comes emotions and feelings. So when we reach an impasse with our drumming, all of a sudden we get emotional about it because we're humans, we're emotional creatures, right? And then we start pulling strings and we make a mess. And oftentimes a student will come into a lesson, will talk to me on a live call, I do those a uh, couple times a week with my students uh, in my online drum school. Uh, links are below this if you want to check that out. I'd love to have you be a part of it, but <laughs> that's not what this is about, right? And so whenever they bring it, by the time it's brought to me, we now have this twisted gross, you know, mess of a problem that it's kind of like, we just got to kind of sort through it because to them, it's an insurmountable ball of yarn. I can't get the knot on. I don't know. A an example would be, I can't play this song no matter what I do. And it's like, okay, well, Let's break that out. Let's let's look at that. I've heard this song and I've heard you play and I think you can play this song. Nope, can't play it. Try it. Can't play it. No matter what I do, it doesn't matter. I can't play it. And I don't say this all the time, but I usually tell myself this, let's stop being dramatic about it. And let's, because in our practice time, when we assess our practice time, and that's the first thing we have to do when we get to this problem that we feel like, man, this is insurmountable. We have to assess it. We have to do so in an unemotional state, which is hard because we're emotional creatures and our identity gets tied up into this thing. That's what we want, that identity change of a drummer. And so we have to step back and go, okay, self, maybe I'm gonna put my dramatic self over there and keep my emotions at bay for right now. And I'm just gonna look at the facts. Now let's take in a student, this, this is real life. I've had this many times, many times. This is a good example. And so it's like, okay, I've heard this song. I have played exercises that are similar to this song. I can play this drum beat because I've played exercises that are similar to this drum beat. Matter of fact, I've played this exact drum beat before. When I play it outside of the song, I'm able to play the drum beat. The drum fills. I can play 95% of these drum fills. I have the facility to do it. The other 5%, I just haven't learned them yet, but I've heard them and I know I have the facility to do that. So we're just looking like an archeologist is digging up dinosaur bones. We're just like getting things and putting them on a table. Do this, I could do this, I could do this. And then we go, okay, but I can't play this song. And that's what I'm doing as a teacher because I go, well, actually I've heard you play this song before, or not this song, I've heard you play the elements in this song before. So I don't believe that. Nope, can't play it. It's like, okay, well, let's, let's back up. So many times I will spend half the lesson going, okay, so the groove to this song is this, and I'll play it slowly, and then they play it slowly. I'm like, okay, okay, you can play this groove, gotcha. All right, then we go on to the next. Well, what's this first drum? Let's look at this drum fill. Let's look at this. Oh, here's a second groove. And as we work through it, they're like, yeah, I can play that. I'm like, okay. So you can play the song. Nope, can't play the song. Ah, we have problems putting it all together. So then we back up and we go, okay. So we have problems 
when we transition between things. Transitioning could be transitioning from a drum beat to a drum fill, a drum fill to a drum beat, a drum beat to a drum beat. So you're going for the bridge to the chorus. These are things that we do very often. Going from not playing to playing. So stops in the music or the beginning of the music or whatever that may be. These are all transitional points. I look at it like going into another room of a house, right? The song is a house and, and each time we go to the, the bridge, we're opening a door and we don't want hinges that are squeaky. That's drum fills that we rush or we drag, we drop a beat with the drum uh, groove, like all that stuff. We want to oil those hinges whenever we're kind of walking around the room or, or, or the, the house of this song. I'm making an analogy. I'm getting lost in the analogy, right? Going about this, we have to dissect it and figure out what those issues exactly are. Transitional points are very common thing. So we have all the elements to the song. We haven't put them together. And that's when I go, oh, okay. So in your practice time, you need to play groove A for four measures and then groove B for four measures and then groove A and groove B. You need to play groove A, drum fill, one, groove A. Groove A, drum fill, one, groove A. And we need to loop those until we go through the whole song. And oftentimes when we look at the whole song, there's one transition. There's one section. And they're like, yeah, I mean, I play fine up until like the two minute mark. And then whenever it's going to the bridge, I, every time, every time I'm like, ah. Now, we've assessed the problem. You can play this song. What does that do? Telling ourselves, oh, I in fact can't play this song. What does that do for us? It gives us confidence, right? It removes the emotion. No, actually I can play this song. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a drummer, I'm a businessman, right? So I lean on my past successes. And whenever I come up to some, against something, I'm like, okay, wait a second. Don't get dramatic here. I did this before, it was similar. I think I could do this, you know? Whether it be learning a new program or an ad set or whether it be making a video or something with my drumming, whatever that may be. So we look on past successes and go, I can play this. It's that one section. Now that we found the one section that is the failure point, then we attack that. So you see how we assessed the whole thing first? And that we don't do on this instrument. That's not something we do in our practice time on this instrument. But see, we want a new exercise. We want something new and shiny that's gonna make us feel good and we can play it. And that's not always the quickest path to success. Let's let's talk about something that's a bigger picture item. Let's talk about something that maybe is a little bit deeper ingrained in your playing. We gotta look closer. My playing doesn't feel good. I can play the patterns. I You can you could put a book in, in front of me, I can play all those things, but it doesn't feel good. Okay, that that's definitely a problem. Another problem would be, I can play all these songs, I can play all these exercises in these books, I can do all this. This was my issue for many years, but I don't feel like I understand what I sound like. And I don't feel like I have a distinct voice. It's like, okay, well, this is an honest assessment. I feel like my drumming is broken that way. I can, I have all this facility and I can't access it. And none of it feels good. So whenever I host a drum camp, I mentioned this earlier, registration for those are, is open right now. Three of them have sold out. We're doing six for the whole year. One's almost, uh, the fourth one is almost selling out so if you want it we have level one level two level three lefties right light-handed left-handed open-handed doesn't matter what you play i would love to have you come the link is in the video description this is our third year of doing them i mean we have a 77 percent retention rate it they're really fun they're incre they're incredible not because i'm saying that the students have said that and they're just as incredible for me so i'd love to have you be a part of it one of the things that i harp on during the week and that me and grant who is our community manager also a, a, a great drummer what we're looking for is that i'm looking for that one thing in their playing i'm looking for that lever that i can pull that makes the whole system work right or i can we can fix one thing that we can focus on for that week and so oftentimes it's coming down to this thing one that came up a, a good number of times this year was students could not play the song without the chart in front of them. They didn't understand song form, the bigger picture of song form. And to them, it caused them to have massive failure points all along their playing, and it made them feel like their, their drumming was like it's broken. I don't understand. I can't play this any song again, and I can't remember it well. It's like, okay, hold up. Let's rewind. Let's assess this. You can play this song when I put the sheet music in front of you. Yes. You can play all these drum beats. You can play this. You, yes, 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 yes. Okay. We need to work on song form. How do I do that? So I brought on a whiteboard. We had a session, an impromptu session. I was like, everybody get in this room. I brought on a whiteboard. I was like, I'm about to listen to a song I've never listened to, and I'm going to chart it in front of you. And I want you to understand how I'm focused on song form. I'm not focused on, oh, the third 16th note in the 84th measure of the second beat. It's like, no, I'm focused on like, what's the, because it doesn't matter if you can't remember the song. Nothing else matters, right? So nothing else matters until we can understand song form. And after I worked through that one song, they were like, oh, well, that's pretty easy. I'm like, good, I erased the whole thing. I was like, we're doing another one. And I did another one. By the end of it, they were writing it down. And it helped them understand we can zoom out from that sheet music. And for a lot of them, it was like, 
it clicked and they were like, oh man. And by the end of the week, they were remembering that. I had one, he was charting tons of songs in his hotel room in the morning on breaks. Like he was just charting, 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 just trying to get song for it. By the end of the week, he was so much better. Then he came back a couple weeks later. It was Christmas time. He's like, there's this one Christmas song I've been I've been trying to play. And he's like, and I there were so many random snare hits and stuff. And he's like, and now I can because before I was zoomed in too much and I zoomed out now. I can see the song form. I can see what's going on. And now... I'm playing this song that I've tried for years to play. It's really powerful once we do this, okay? So the first thing we have to do is assess what's going on. The second thing we have to do is dissect it. So we assessed it, you feel like you can't play this song. Let's dissect that. And then we start bringing out all these pieces and putting them on the table. We're not judging anything for good or bad. We're looking for the problem. We're looking for the answer, even if we don't like the answer. Let's go back to an analogy I used earlier. This was, this was something for me. When I was 19 on Burma Street, I almost lost my gig because because I did not, I couldn't make people dance. I didn't, and I worked in a dance club. I couldn't, I didn't have, you know, groove, pocket, like these, this wasn't, I didn't have it, <laughs> you know? I could play all these notes, but it didn't feel how it needed to feel. And my drum teacher showed up at my door one day and he's like, dude, you're about to lose your job. I'm like, what do I do? He's like, I, you have to find groove. You have to find the pocket, you know? And then I'm like, should I go watch how Stella got her groove back? You know, which is an old movie. And it's like all these random things are going through my mind. Like, how do I do this? But I had to separate my emotions from it and go, okay, you've been so concerned with advancing your facility and all this stuff that you forgot one of the big seven. The big seven, are, those are seven big picture principles I came up with. With through my teaching and it is through watching students through assessing and one of those is groove timing's another one they're two separate things you can be in time and not have groove you can have groove and not have good timing you can have a good it feels good but man it is speeding up slowing down if it does it too much right then it doesn't feel good but it, there's this cusp of like no, he's got good groove it's just like we speed up through the whole song and by the end it's too fast we can have one without the other so that's one of the big seven i i, I had this foundational pillar that i had not built down i'd been so concerned with faster notes and more notes and all those things and i was about to lose my job i'd moved a new city 19 i had to rent you know what i'm saying like i had food I, got, I had to eat and so i had to assess how do i find groove how do i find pocket and it was and i felt bad about my playing because you know my identity's tied up so i have gone through all of these things and that's why i can help people assess them better is because i've, I've done these things so once we have assessed it the second thing is why dissect it we look and it's like okay my playing doesn't feel good why doesn't my playing feel good there could be we may not come up with a reason like i don't know you know and so at that point once we've assessed it once we've dissected it then we diagnose it and diagnosing it is figuring out a path forward we need to figure out how we can get forward with what we're doing and move forward sometimes that takes a teacher looking at it sometimes that takes us just being honest with ourselves and going you know what actually it doesn't feel good because i haven't played that song enough for it to feel good and so once we have diagnosed this we've got to have the solution to move forward and a solution can be a very simple thing but all too often we don't do this process we're so busy wanting to play these drums which are so fun but come on they're not fun if we're feeling bad all the time about it we feel like it's broken and we can't play and we're no good and blah 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 like all the things all the things right we're just kind of vomiting all over ourselves so we have to do this and we do this away from the drum set in an unemotional spot. Get your favorite drink and just sit down. Be like, all right, what is going on here? And then be willing to accept the answer. As one of my students, Paul, we were talking about this on the call yesterday. He said, even though I didn't like the answer, I had to accept it. You know, I said, it's a very good way to put it. And so what we need to do once we have assessed this, dissected what's going on, we've diagnosed it. Now we're finding the solution. The solution may be getting into a program. It may be like, you know, some, some people come to my camps, they're like, hey, this is the solution. I'm gonna spend a week on this. I wanna be done with this by the week. It's like, okay, let's go. Sometimes it's finding an in-person teacher. Sometimes it's finding exercises. But once we find that solution, then we've got to dig in and we've got to do the work. And that's when we get back here. So let me give you an example of that. Let's go back to Groove. I can't make people dance. My playing doesn't feel good. I'm about to lose my gig. This was actually like making my hand sweat because it was a real deal. I freaked out and did a lot of things that didn't matter. I like drove back to my hometown and grabbed all this percussion stuff because they said they were going to move me to percussion so I could play with the night band, maybe learn what groove felt like. I came home. I sat around for hours worried, didn't help anything. And then I started digging into, I said, you know what? I'm going to find some resources and I'm going to find some players that I know have really good pocket, but maybe teach too. And one of those, I didn't know enough people in town to kind of find an in-person teacher. I mean, this was before like social media and stuff was up, which sounds like a long time ago. It really wasn't that long ago. So I couldn't just like jump on there and find somebody. I got 
Zaros, the commandments of R&B drumming and the commandments of funk drumming. I borrowed them from my drum teacher. And I just sat there and watched them. I would watch them over and over and over and over. These old songs that are classics that will make people dance. The song that always makes people dance is Brick House. Play that funky music. Like these are songs that people always dance to. Why? So you know what? I'm going to figure this out. So I took one song. I had the problem. I diagnosed it, dissected it, assessed it, and it's like, okay, now it's time for me to do the work. What was the work? I took the song Brick House, and I, like, it was way too much work that I did on it. I would go through, okay, what's the bass drum doing? Exactly what's the bass drum? Oh, it's, it's actually swung a little bit in sections, but the rest of the beat's not swung, and that's kind of like, how's that? So then I'd listen back and go, okay, wait a second, how's the bass drum interacting with what the bass guitar is doing? So then, I, and it's like, I'm just digging into this song, you know, dissecting it. It's like, you know, whenever you were in class in high school and they're, they're making you dissect a frog or something, you're just digging in there. You're like, here's a heart, you know, and you're like, why are we doing this? Why is this animal here? This feels like I shouldn't be doing this and killing animals just so I can look inside, and I really don't care to do it actually i'd rather go to lunch anyway i had issues with it and so it's like we're just digging in there trying trying to explore what's going on and then i'd listen back through and go okay well what's the guitar doing huh okay well, what's the okay how does that lay with the vocals and i'd listen back to the vocals you're like steven that's not drums it's not all about drums there's other musicians playing so then i'd listen back and go okay hi-hat what's he doing with the hi-hat just particular in the hi-hat so it's zooming in now and then i go okay so that's what's happening with the hi-hat let me zoom back out and listen to the whole song how that fits in there Ooh, okay well, that snare drum, how's that interact? <sighs> Zoom back in, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until I could figure this out. And I did this with one song. And once I'd done it with one song, I did it with a second song. And I did it with a third song. All songs that I was playing. And then I was having to play at the club every day. And so I started looking for people that were moving when I was playing. Not like people that didn't have any rhythm. You can tell those people, right? You know, they come across the dance floor, you're like, Ugh. you know, everybody's like, in the back going oh we wish they'd stop it right i'm looking for someone that has rhythm that is actually dancing it's like okay one day i remember we started playing this song and i see a guy over on his chair start nodding his head and tapping his foot and i was like okay whatever i'm looking for i think i got it but it, he didn't do that every song so i'm like okay so i don't have this every song so it was this thing of me dissecting what was going on and then working towards a solution the work part takes a very long time and most of you i would say don't mind doing the work. You don't mind it. But we get sidelined because we think, oh no, everything's broke. We, we like make this big knot. You know, my six-year-old, she's learning to, to tie shoes and things and she'll bring something to me. And it's just like, how did you get that? You're actually so good at knots. How did you get so good at knots? Like, that's what I want to ask her. I want to be like, how did you get this good at knots? Because I think I have things to learn from you. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, I don't know. She brings, she's like, we'll just hold it. Like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. And so we start, and she's frustrated. She's, you know, all up in it. And I'm like, hey, calm down. Let's figure this out. And so then I start prodding. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm looking for the one loose place. And then you find it, and you start you start just working it. And once you work that one and get it out, then it's like, all right, let's find the next loose thing. And that's what we're doing in our drumming. But all too often, we get so caught up emotionally in our practice time. For me, my practice time is not an emotional event. I really don't want it to be an emotional event. I can have my emotions outside of there. My practice time is for me to assess what is going on and action items that I can do to get past that. You know, imagine if it's, let's say, a mechanic or an engineer and they're working on this engine and they get emotional because a part of it doesn't work or they can't get a bolt to thread or whatever. Like, that's not what happens there, right? Why? Because it doesn't help. Nobody needs to get emotional over nuts and bolts, right? It just doesn't, it doesn't need to happen. We just need to figure out the solution. It's a physical solution of how we can get it to fit on there. And in our drumming and our music and in our playing, that's exactly what we have to do too. But it's hard. Why? Because when we start playing an instrument, we want to identify as a drummer. That's what we're seeking. We're seeking that identity change. And we don't often really acknowledge that. So that's why when something's not working, it can kind of jade your whole day. You are looking to have the identity. We go through life with a lot of identities and we want to understand that we are at least halfway decent at them. What are some of my identities? Well, let's see. I'm a guy. That's one identity. I'm a dad. I'm a son, I am a, uh, I'm a husband, I'm a business owner, I'm a drummer, I'm also a musician, which is different from a drummer. You know, uh, uh, it's like musician, subheading, drummer, right? But I also play some other instruments. And this year I'm looking to learn some other instruments. I'm a friend. For some, 
I'm a mentor for others. I'm an enemy. I don't mean to be, but that is an identity I have. Maybe that's an identity I want to fix. I don't want to identify with that, but that is the, maybe that's the identity others have. Some others have me. They don't like me and that's okay. So we carry these identities and what, what we're seeking to do whenever we are a drummer is identify as a drummer. Uh, I'm reading a great book by Rick Rubin uh, on creativity. It's fantastic. If you, you should pick it up. I don't remember what it's called. The Creative path or way or something. I don't know, living creative. I don't know, something creatively. Just look his name up in a book and it'll come up. And he made a really good statement in there. And he said, you know, creativity is a way of life. It is a practice that we do. And you're either practicing creativity or you're not practicing creativity. Drumming for me is a way of life. Doesn't mean it has to dominate life, but it is a way of life. And it is something I do regularly. I need to be in the practice of being a drummer. And he said, it does no good to judge whether you are good or bad at the creative practice. And then he said something that, you know, I've mentioned a couple times at Live Calls of Students. He said, you know, a monk is in the practice of being a monk. It does no good for him to think, am I, am I being, am I practicing good as a monk or not? He said, there's no, you are either practicing as a monk or you're not, you know? It's not like you have a good monking day or a bad monking day. It's like you're in the practice. It's always, it's just a process and you're always trying to get better at it. So what we have to do is we have to stop putting good and bad on things and we have to start laying them out on the table unemotionally and going, okay, what's that? Well, I don't look like, I don't like how that looks, you know, or I do like how that looks, but I want to change it a little bit. Sometimes it's our attitude towards things. Sometimes it's how quickly we're trying to uh, get ahead. Sometimes we need to turn off some of the outside distractions. It's like, you know what? I'm actually on an okay path, but because I'm, I'm consuming so much social media, I'm spending more of my time comparing myself to people than I am practicing. And I need to stop that. So maybe that's something that you're doing. You know, something I recently discovered that was affecting my drums, I was drinking too much coffee. It's got caffeine and I was kind of, I was having panic attacks. And I was like up to like five or six cups a day, right? I, I've been on the road. It just, I wasn't doing it for caffeine. I was just drinking coffee because I like coffee. I had to back off that. Immediately, some things started getting better. When you feel like your drumming is broke, assess what is going on. Dissect it. Diagnose it. Come up with a solution. That's the treatment for it. And then put in the work. But please, please, please don't go jump on the drum kit first. Figure out the problem. If you need some help figuring out the problem, find the teacher. I'd be happy to help you. Email me, help at stevensdrumshed.com. Sign up for my online drum school. Come to one of the camps. Find a way forward. But we first have to figure out what the problem is. And sometimes at drum camps, that can take me half the week with a person and going, okay, sometimes the problem has nothing to do with their drumming. It's just making them feel like their drumming is broke. If you like this like kind of long form content, I also have another channel that is the Drum Show Podcast. It's nothing but long form uh, content. A video drops every day. Monday. Well, you can listen to it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you can find podcasts. So go check that out. It's called the Drum Show Podcast. I'll link it in the video description.